Hello everybody. Welcome to the latest Worlds of ZZT live stream. Today we are celebrating for all of January ZZT's 30th birthday. It was released way way back in 1991 and has kind of been an important thing to say the least. Here we are 30 years later still making games more than 2000s I believe. I should have actually looked that up. No, 2000 sounds right. More than 2000 have been produced over these past 30 years, with 2020 actually having the most releases since, like, 2007. Uh, and as Adult Witch is saying here, we recently had our first 2020 run release, which is a big giant community collaboration to remix this very game, which we will also be streaming in a few weeks. But... For today, we are starting with the original of the originals. We are going to be playing Town of ZZT in ZZT version 2.0, which functionally means nothing. The only things that are different in town are ELC, Atomic Computer Systems, instead of Epic Mega Games, which itself is outdated since it would be Epic Games these days. And yes, it's, as he's as saying, it's probably more than 3,000, honestly. We are definitely... let me just see what the latest ID number is on the museum. Yeah, so Town of ZZT Remix has the ID number of 2948. Now, granted, compilations and all sorts of other things throw those numbers around, and that also counts like utilities and not ZZT worlds, but 3000 is a very safe bet, actually. Well, I'm not going to be pressing the spacebar to shoot, so for this, it's not going to really be any different, but it's thematically appropriate. We will see some different branding, though, the About ZZT, all this stuff. We'll take a moment and check out this as well. ZZT, the object-oriented game, copyright 1991. Let's see, let's learn about ZZT. Oh, well, okay, it's going to be... Let's just continue this from top to bottom, then, if it's just going to jump to the middle of it. Please register your copy of ZZT. Win royalties from Best of ZZT. Distribute this program. ZZT is shareware, so feel free to give copies away. Suggestions. Upload ZZT on your favorite VBS. Bulletin boards provide a great service to users, and they always appreciate new uploads. Give a copy to your user group so they can add it to their software library. A recipe for five better friends. 1. Make five copies of your ZZT disc. 2. Give each copy to a friend, neighbor, or business associate. You now have five better friends. Concept of ZZT was inspired by the recent movement towards object-oriented programming, this hot new fad for the 90s. ZZT is the first major game to be based on this new programming technology. Software was created with Turbo Pascal 5.0, which apparently was actually 5.5, but who's counting? An excellent programming tool from Borland International. We distribute ZZT as shareware because we have faith that users, upon recognizing our hard work and dedication, will register and support our products. Many people have influenced ZZT over its two-year development. Actually, I didn't realize it was that long. That's kind of nuts. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's Twitch. There's ads now that I get zero say in, unfortunately. Some have helped directly by programming creating game boards. Others have provided inspiration by laying the foundations of the modern shareware concept. Actually, a lot of this stuff is kind of interesting. Two-year development period, and the idea that other people may have contributed some stuff to this? Tim Sweeney, a student at the University of Maryland, led the development of ZZT. Many thanks go to Scott Miller of Apogee Software, who showed the world how entertaining character-based games could be with his Cross series of adventures. Drum-like sound effects used in ZZT were inspired by Ben Foster's PC Beat Drum Simulator. Andrew Saucy Jr. deserves the credit for uploading ZZT on CompuServe, Genie, Bix, which I have never heard of, Delphi, and other major bulletin boards with his Megapost service. Epic Megaposts. And finally, 
Thanks go to Jim Button, Bob Wallace, Marshall McGee, and the many others who helped pioneer the shareware concept. CCT, copyright 1991. So one thing that is different is the title screen's a little more text heavy with its logo. But other than that, pretty much the same. We've got CCT here. We'll be encountering centipedes and lions and tigers and others. And you have this nice sort of glossary to help the player get started. Ammo, torches, gems, scrolls, doors and keys, passages and boulders. The works. I hope I don't have any high scores in here. Okay, this is a clean high score file, or at least as clean as we know it to be. So that's our, let's see if we can beat Tim Sweeney's score here. We shall see. So here we are in the town of ZZT. That's a good question. I have no idea who Neil Tender is. Prior to the stream, I posted a Twitter poll a lot later than I meant to, asking for which way to go, because this game, most ZZT games we've seen have been fairly linear. There's definitely been exceptions, but this one's pretty massively open to start with right here. We've got four board exits, two passages, and a locked purple door to the palace. So presumably, six ways to go, with a seventh to eventually come around. Uh, I decided to just go with a Twitter poll, so we can immediately get things moving. We are going to head north first, but once we start taking these paths, we're gonna head to the armory first. But we're gonna begin with Actually, you know, picking up our stuff here. I'm already noticing a difference that I never noticed before. This scroll is actually a scroll. Uh, later games, later games, later revisions change it into an object, and it also plays a distinct tune. So we can actually only read this once, so pay attention. Welcome to the town of ZZT. Your task is to obtain the four purple keys that are hidden throughout the town. These keys unlock the doors leading into the palace, your destination. Your search for the keys will lead you throughout the town, where you must battle ferocious creatures and solve intricate puzzles. The awards that await you are vast, but a warning. Many others have entered ZZT, and they have not been seen since. This is definitely different text, too, actually. Enjoy playing. We put lots of work into this game, so do not underestimate its size. Thousands of people will play ZZT, but only a few will win. Are you going to be among them? And we'll never see that text again. So our intro here. We got our armory. A locked door. A key. A guardian guarding it. And some conveyors here that keep us out. We got our first bit of object interactivity here. Ring our doorbell. And we get called a Cretan. ZZT taught me a lot of words as a child. Cretan, definitely one of them. Hmm. Neil Tender as one of Tim's computer science mentors in college. So that would be interesting if true. Hello, you must be new to town. If you want to be successful around here, you'll need to buy some supplies. So we don't have any money here, but we could buy ammo or a torch. We can always get some advice, money or not. And, you know, I would sing this, but we are on Twitch. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I had heard of Led Zeppelin. The name, I was definitely young enough to not be like, oh yeah, Led Zeppelin. These are lyrics to a Led Zeppelin song. I'm sure I had heard Stairway by this point, but... You know, here's some lyrics to Stairway to Heaven. Aside from that, we gotta actually solve our first puzzle. And it's a nice gentle puzzle, because you can't actually screw this up. And it's also completely optional. You don't have to go to the stock room. There's plenty of ammo elsewhere. But all you have to do is just time your doorbell pressing. And the poor guardian, you had one job. Now my favorite sound, picking up all these items. As 
So now we're pretty loaded up here. Got nine whole gems, which I am not going to spend because we're going north first. Let's pick up our other items on the board. So this game having such an open-ended structure means that every single spot can potentially be the player's first, which is always a, a chore for balance. It's very possible to be going in this direction and having no ammo, or having lots of ammo, or being horribly injured from other paths. Uh, this one, I always really liked this board as a kid when I first played ZZT. Of myself and apparently numerous others from finding old ZZT worlds throughout the years loved making sort of like security systems with blink wall lasers and spinning guns. It's apparently a time honored tradition. Mostly just want to run really fast, not get shot, and get away from these walls as soon as we can. This board is, you know, introducing blink walls, introducing spinning guns, some more keys. And one thing I gotta give Swinging some credit for, because this game is sort of this hub and branching paths structure, you're always gonna have to sort of turn around and head back to the start. And he does a nice job of speeding up the return trips a bit. You know, we had to get that key, we had to go through that little gauntlet of blink walls, but... Now we can just, you know, come and go as we please. He did do quite a nice job designing this game right from the start. He also likes to do some more creative geometry, I guess I'd say. And you can see our sort of triangular shape here just jutting out into the border. And, you know, just even just this tiny little nub sticking out. It would be really easy for this to just be perfectly straight lines. But I think it just makes these boards look a little more interesting to look at. Oh, hey, actually another difference. This is fun because I didn't actually compare the 3.2 version of town with the 2.0 one. There are normally not fake walls lining this bridge. That's actually really interesting, as we'll see in a moment. We also get introduced to water. Blinky, ugly water. It's not the cool water. Uh, we can't shoot, so I can't demonstrate shooting over water. And here's our first, well not our first NPC, here's our latest obstacle. A troll blocking the bridge. Pay for passage or forget about the castle. So we got our 10 gems, thanks to the armory. Otherwise, we'd have had to explore some other paths of it first. But what's interesting about the use of fake walls here is we get the a fake wall secret passage message. And normally, the only fake walls in town are actually walls, like, they are meant to trick the player into thinking they are walls until they discover they are fake. Using this as a, a path is actually pretty interesting. I assumed that was something that the ZZT community started doing themselves, using fake walls as floors. So here it is in the most original thing. And yes, this is very adventure-looking, for sure. I mean, even the bridge is an adventure bridge. But yeah, this would be the first one, and it's actually removed in later versions. So, never mind. Playing the 2.0 ZZT is actually very cool. And I completely missed commenting on the fact that we are entering the castle of lots and lots of evil. So we can head on in inside the castle. If we want, we can enter the labyrinth and prepare to die. And there's a throne room behind a locked door. Some lions and uh, some resources to pick up. There's some aggressive lines. They are definitely chasing us down. I'm gonna hide down here. When I got ZZT as a child, it was on a shareware CD, and 
me and my brother, we were pretty young and new to computers, like actually using them instead of sitting down and somebody loading a game for us. So we were running ZZT and Super ZZT directly off of a CD. We didn't copy it to a hard drive or a disc or anything. And unfortunately, that meant that we couldn't save. We just assumed that that was because we didn't have the full version of the game, not realizing that's because it was trying to write to a CD, which could not be done. So we would play Monster Zoo more than Town, but we would play these games a lot and never come close to actually finishing them. It is not an easy game to beat with one credit, as it were. And yeah, I mean, fake walls as floors is definitely like an early thing, and it turns out it's an official early thing. This will also introduce us to darkness and wild video artifacts if my stream preview is showing anything. And unfortunately, Castle is mostly dark and mostly a maze. If I was smart, I would have looked at a map. So I don't actually have this sequence memorized enough. I've played through this game many a times. This is a trap. Don't pick up this gem. You're, it's not going to be worth one health versus losing ten if you get hit. But, so don't mind me as I wander aimlessly. Okay, well, this is the exit, but we can't quite get in just yet. There's going to be a, a big old boss fight against six dragons and a lot of bombs. Luckily, again, Tim does a pretty good job with the resources. I mean, if you go in here without going to the armory and getting the stuff there, it's probably a little tighter. But this is also the one area that is blocked off by the gem requirement, so you're probably going to have an okay stock of torches for this sequence. There's also the bulk of the dark rooms in the game. Yeah, yeah, there are definitely more. I don't know who Bill is. He does live, though. Oh. Okay, we'll go this way. He does kind of help out a bit by sort of color coding the rooms. Oh wow, I see. I didn't actually know that Super ZZT did that. That's pretty cool. Okay, actually went where I was supposed to go. This is the room of extreme annoyance. This is why. Centipedes kind of help out more than they hurt. You can kind of follow them around a bit. Um, you also see we are limited in our shots. Yeah. Which makes missing dangerous. Not annoyed yet, but I will be because I'm pretty sure that you have to go in from the other side to get the key. And then this side to get to the door, so I think I did this backwards. No, I did it correct. Lucky me. Exactly. It's good game design is doing bad design, but tagging it as bad. That is correct. Yeah, so you do need to go in from the other side. But that's not difficult to get to.
I mean, we saw as well that I'm playing this in ZZT 2.0, so we don't have our solid HUD luxury of special cheats or seeing board exits, anything like that. We gotta navigate everything as one did back in 1991. Which is to say, one invisible wall at a time. Oh my goodness. No. Okay. I honestly didn't realize people used spacebar shooting. I very frequently want to, you know, shoot and then just in multiple directions. But yes, this is a bad board. Like, sorry, Tim, 30 years later, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Like, there's not enough happening. There's There were centipedes. There's no sort of sense of danger, and I mean, as we've seen in other games that came out later, they kind of address the invisible wall situation in somewhat better ways. Uh, most common definitely being the one where as soon as you touch a wall, an object detects that like this invisible wall is there and it flashes the whole maze. So you don't get these permanent walls, but you do get like a look at the layout. There we go. Now we get plenty of gems as a reward and our blue key. And the annoyance is no more. The real question is, has anybody like purposely played a ZZT game with mouse controls that didn't tell you to use a mouse? Or do it for speedrunning purposes, thanks to how weird the mouse controls work. I know I definitely tried playing with a joystick over the years, but since this is such an early DOS game, we're talking two buttons maximum for your joystick. There's no, not even Gravis gamepad support. So you're kind of stuck. I think the two buttons are bound to just like spacebar equivalent, even on this version. Or maybe it is a shift equivalent, I can't remember. Oh, and the other, I think, is just used to, like, close messages with the enter key. So you're still, like, having to run to the keyboard to light a torch. There's not a lot of reason to play with the joystick. It's still very awkward. Whoop. Okay. Clean up these tigers here. Oh, I shot a gem! My hubris! The perfect score is gone. Perfect score is long gone already, but you gotta make every gym count if you're competing against Tim's high score here. It's only one health, but it's like 10 points. Okay, that's almost where I want to be. Oh! I was doing so good at not getting hit. I was very impressed with myself. And then I just walked onto a board with a centipede directly where I started, I think. And these are from spinning guns there, those bullets. Those are not tigers. Uh, perhaps this game's biggest flaw is its health. Because you can't buy health. The only health you get in this game is from gems. And I know at one point I counted them all, it's like a hundred and something. So you really do need to make your health count. Or especially because probably one of the toughest action sequences is at the very end of the game. Uh, I'm not gambling with that gem. I think this... No. This is the Room of Extreme Annoyance. Okay. No, I just went in a big old circle. I need to find my way out of here.
I know I didn't cross the spinning guns on my way in. Oh, there we go. Okay, that wasn't the extreme noise room. So I th think we're good. Yeah, yeah, I should just go right from here, and I believe that will take me to the dragons. All right, we are here. So this is going to show some... Also, yeah, that's also definitely true. That's a very adventure-looking dragon character. But at the same time, though, given your very limited choice of characters, it's honestly not that bad of a dragon one to begin with, reference or not. So these dragons are immune to bullets. I think they play a noise if you shoot them. Nope, they don't do nothing. So yeah, this gets to introduce you to objects being a bit more complex. Most objects in the original worlds don't do a lot. They stand in place and sell you things. Or they like push something out of the way for you when you get an item or whatever, or hit a button. We're going to vaporize some dragons. And get to see ZZT's audio limitations as it like, it cues up multiple sounds and then interrupts them. But I mean, it isn't a bad boss fight. It's straightforward. It's doable. There's an ample number of bombs, so you really don't run much of a risk of actually running out. It's very easy to get multiples at the start. Ow. Alright, we vaporized our dragons so we can get out of here. And we're back on our starting board, but now in a weird location. Uh, you were locked in place, I think it did lock us in through the door. I'm pretty sure how I think about it. I wasn't paying enough attention. Maybe it doesn't. I don't like ruffians in the dark. They're scary. My health is okay. Honestly, my issue with this game's health is kind of carried over in the other games as well in the original series. And none of them let you buy health, none of them give you sort of an unlimited source. And Caves has a weird section where there's a board with like a ton of heart objects that give you health and that are never used again. It's very strange. And we got ourselves another key, and again, thankfully, he was nice enough to put in this little recess here so you can safely push these boulders from either whichever way. You won't softlock the game. But we'll get to some softlock situations later for sure. We've got our purple key. We've got our white key to the throne room. We didn't actually check out, well, you know, we got our purple key. We should be good to go. But nobody leaves the castle without the scepter of lots and lots of power. Return to your quest. So, showing off just a fun quirk of the coding. If you're fast enough, you can just touch the object and move away before it responds, and then it'll end up just giving the default message again. So you could just, you can skip that quest. You don't need to get the scepter if you want to exploit this. You can just bribe him a second time. Well, I mean, maybe the troll puts another scepter back after each adventure goes through. Oh, there's no skeletons in here, but I mean, there's also a lot of lions, so it's tough to say.
is another puzzle that I unfortunately don't remember the solution to off the top of my head. Hopefully I won't take too long. But there's our scepter, and we have a an interesting choice for how to do a one-way passage. I think a lot of boards would have just used like transporters or an object or something, but this is very organic. It's you just can't get through because you will get horribly maimed by blink walls if you try. As each one pushes you up into the next, and you'll just lose a lot of health if you try and run through there. This also, yeah, this board loves using purple keys. Which, you know, yeah, you can soft lock this board. Uh, the purple keys here are actually used if you do a speed run of this game. It's possible to engineer things in a way where you just get to take several of them out of here. So another thing you get too is a lot of Sweeney's objects use smiley faces. Even if it's not like a person that you're talking to. But for now we gotta untangle things a bit. Well, let me make a safety save. Because I love to solve this puzzle the wrong way. Is it that consistent? I know there are definitely a lot of char 1s, but are there really no char 2s? Alright, now to just pick up the second key. Haha, good joke. Very funny. Excellent gag. And again, with like interesting geometry, we get this. It's completely meaningless. So it just makes the board look a little different. So if I remember right, I always think that you want to push both of those sliders down into here. But you have to do it one at a time, I think, to do this correctly. Basically, our goal is for the pusher that's locked away right now to push that big long row of sliders across and block the spaces underneath here, so that when you hit the switch, it can't block the path to the scepter. And if you push both of these down at once, then you can't be fast enough to actually get where you need to be. So I believe that what we're supposed to do... Okay, so that keeps that sort of safety locked. Oh no, all that really matters. Yeah, okay, I guess you can do both. Oh no, that's what it is. If you do them both... Or something, I don't know. Don't listen to me. I do not know my puzzles. That releases the pusher, and we did it. I, I didn't break the game. I'm very proud of myself. I love these jazzy beats. And playing our puzzle properly, we get one purple key.
That is the opposite of the exit. You're going to leave the castle instead. Alright, no money needed, no tricks, just continue on. Was he a jazz student, really? I kind of just assumed computer science or something along those lines. So now we got our nice, much easier backtracking, which, I mean, doubly important because I don't think you, you, know, you can't like run these blink walls, the green ones here, backwards. You'll just be destroyed. Open our first key, or open our first door with our key, and head to the palace where we get more doors. Also, thank you for cheering the bits. I am an old man who does not understand Twitch. I don't have like anything hooked up to the Twitch bit system like whatsoever. So let's see, let's go, well, I'm just going to follow the pole. So our next path will be to the west, as that had the, well, second most results here. And we get the three lakes. So now we get to see water going over bullets, bullets going over, I'm saying everything backwards today. We get our bullets going over the water. We get our challenge here of not getting hit, because if you do, you are just sent right back to the beginning of the board. And at the start and the end here, there's these nice sort of safe areas, thankfully. I remember this board being incredibly difficult to get through as a child, and now I can just do it like it's nothing. So I don't know, but I love the three lakes. It's a Classic board, for sure. And speaking of classic boards, this is the Rube board. This is, this is town's most fiendish puzzle, for sure. Mainly because it lies to you. Our three tries is absolutely not the case. It's, I mean, it's a boulder and slider puzzle. This is the kind of board that always looks a lot scarier than it really is, but there's honestly not a whole lot you can actually push. So I don't think it's that bad. I really do like this puzzle. I love the little messages of no and arg. And I like this little spot you get to untangle to block off a path. I mean, I'm trying to just going through the motions. This one I certainly do know the solution to off the top of my head. Otherwise, it would definitely take me longer for sure. You just gotta, you know, push 2x slow. And then just like that, we got our path to the bomb and the breakables. Obviously, we can't shoot on this board, so that would kind of make it a little easy. The scenery gets destroyed a little bit. There's this cool sort of foreshadowing that there's like another path in the corner. How do we get there? Where does it go? Where will it take us? And with that, though, it is purple key number two. Big bonus. Big winner. 1,000 points. That's what happens if you get hit. Your position, it always just takes you to the last spot you entered the board from, or we're on a passage to get to the board, so you can't sort of take damage to save time and get work back to the beginning. You're just gonna go right back to the end now. My goodness, getting 
rewards and things. Thank you for the bonus, the extremely large bonus. I too don't know what that means. So we've got our second key. Open our second door. And I don't like this third door. Because there are a lot of ruffians behind it. Okay. That's actually a... Uh... Yeah, it's not a long game if you know... A lot of the alliance comes from having to figure out the puzzles. If you know the solutions, it goes by much faster. It's, it's, it's puzzles are far more fiendish than anything else. Let's actually use the shop, because they don't really do that ever. We have a lot of money here, and it is safe to spend it all. The only time gems are used is to get into the castle. So, I mean, the prices are low enough that you're probably not going to spend it all. You're pretty much only going to... Well, I was about to say you're pretty much only going to spend torches on the castle, but you're going to be trapped in there. So if you run out of torches in the castle, you can't go and buy more. Three shots for one gem is not a lot of ammo, but like this store is kind of redundant. And really, this is the best thing the vendor's got. But let's buy stuff just for the messages. Here's your ammo. Happy hunting. Here's your torch. He seems very judgmental of that. I'm saying he, but they are not gendered. They are merely vendor. So that's the shop. I remember child me learning how to make ZZT games and just not comprehending how the shops worked in the ZZT games. Following our poll now, we are going to go south. Uh, as a child, south was always the way to go at the start because we did not know how to get through, get the key from the Guardian for a bit. And there's just free ammo here. And a lot of bugs. Look out. And again, the shots are limited, so it's dangerous to miss. And this board plays a lot with the one key at a time rule. Another fun thing to point out is with centipedes is that heads are worth one point, but segments are worth two. So if you really want to max out that score, you actually have to shoot them from behind so that segments don't get turned into heads. I'm getting trapped here. Oh, I'm sorry. The segments are worth three points. It is like the most valuable thing in CCT. Because you're generally making things harder for yourself if you're not shooting the final segment, because otherwise you're splitting things in half. board is very bright and colorful. Uh, one of the weirder things about town is that in the castle to the north, it's blocked off on the east, but there actually is a board connection set to take you to this board. So I'd imagine at some point in development, the layout of the game had to have been at least a little bit different since that's still lingering in there. There's, of course, no way to travel between the two boards without, like, zapping walls on both sides, so... This one does slightly suffer in that, you, again, like the Room of Extreme Annoyance, you kind of run out of things to shoot. And then it's mostly just a lot of walking 
in lengthy fashion. That's our last blue key. He also did a pretty good job of being smart with his key usage. Like, we could take our blue key and just go to other boards, but there's really not any sort of sequence breaks. There's one exception, really, other than like glitching, like using bugs to get a bunch of purple keys from the scepter room. But the only other exception is if you hold on to the green key from the armory, that one actually can let you skip some stuff coming up because there's going to be another green door. We also get our prison. Enter. And again, we are locked into a path. We are just getting sent into prison. Here we are. Welcome to prison. This board introduces time limits. We get 149 seconds to get through this board. Uh, if we get hit, we'll be sent back to the beginning. And it'll, the time will reset. Man, I... I did see this board's remix board just because I purposely matched up the screenshots that I used for the stream announcement. I think it is. The timers aren't really used that much. I don't think they're that bad of a mechanic. I think this board actually is what really influences the idea of building a ZZT security system with blink walls and spinning guns. Definitely worth knowing that most action boards are limiting our shots to one at a time. If you're quick enough there, you can actually grab the key before you have to like ride out of it. And again, we get our collect the blue keys gimmick. But this time we're introduced to a duplicator. So there will be a threat at all times. You can stand in front of it and break the duplicator at the cost of 10 health, but these lines are not nearly as aggressive as the ones in the labyrinth. And I mean, you can kind of funnel things around with the boulders if you really want. Uh, this is a common misconception here. It says time. There's a bunch of gems. Gems do not give time. That's just supposed to be like, hey, are you sure you have time to pick all these up? And you do. The time limit's fairly generous, really. We got more than a minute to go. The spin guns here are definitely more aggressive than on the three lakes, but this time we can shoot so we can kind of fight back against the bullets. I guess some more creative uses of boulders. Clear us a nice path. I mean, there's a possibility that they would have given time, but I think it's just odd flavor. Speaking of odd flavor, scroll says inmate number 15925. I wonder if that number has any significance. Name the ZZT bandit. Arrested for armed robbery of the Bank of ZZT. Violation of the Civilized Object Code of Conduct and Unlawful Syntax Error. A sentence? N years of imprisonment, where N equals the largest integer such that N and N plus 2 are both prime. Tim Sweeney, you are a nerd. Man, I like how I like scroll off like, wait, what? But... CCT player does not believe in prisons and just lets this man go. I keep gendering everybody. The prisoner speaks. Thank you, fellow bandit, for freeing me. You will be repaid. I have hidden the secret to the bank of ZZT in the armory. It is to be found behind a row of boulders. And then we just set this dude free. And this guy here doesn't really care about that, I guess. So now, so 
now we get two paths here. And we're going to go get this one out of the way because it's a puzzle that's got some problems. We are going to safety save. Here it is. So the puzzle here is just can't shoot, use bombs, get to the key. Straightforward, easy enough. Except there's these things all across the board. And as soon as they are freed, they will just start a timer and throw stars at you. It's not great. You kind of just got to move your butt to get through this board. It's not possible to get through this without setting any of these things off. And now we're seeing why this board is a problem. Okay, that's good enough. But the stars will push bombs, they will reset your position, they will spawn endlessly. This is a very board, a very frustrating board that's very easy to kind of just put yourself in an unwinnable position. If you get enough stars going, it's pretty much impossible to push the bombs. And you're just gonna run out. Run out of bombs or health, more likely. So you want to get that key quick and early. And then we can go check out our other puzzle. This one is a sliding puzzle. It's no rube board, that's for sure. But that's probably for the best. It's a bit nicer in that, well, you still can soft lock yourself if you push these too far and block your path out or to access some of these. It's definitely something you can kind of like catch yourself and recover before you make a fatal error. So the goal here is merely to line up a couple of these boulders so that you can safely push everything. Is this one? Yes, okay. So you just gotta set up your sliders, pretty straightforward. No, if I actually, you know, set them. Hang on one moment. Okay, there's one left to go. Well, the nice thing is once it's the last one you can, just push them freely. Like, yes, I just blocked off the left side, but it doesn't matter now. I am sure there's probably like an optimum solution that minimizes travel. If anybody wants to do like a full speed run of Town of ZZT. One at a time. And our reward is think fast. Tigers and lots of bears who are going to destroy themselves. Oop. There's that one shot limit. The one shot limit really changes 
the dynamic of these action boards. And I feel like most CCT games that were using creatures and things like this never really played around with the shot limit all that much. Which, you know, I mean, I'm holding down the fire button here, and in most games I would just shoot a nice wall of bullets and just get through this area, but you have to be a bit more involved to get through all this. Ow. These ones are like really aggressive. But at this point we've got hundreds of ammo. Like again, if you don't know how to get into the armory supply room and you're just relying on the ammo given to you from the bugs board, it's it's gonna be a lot tighter. There's some ammo management involved, but really it's health is all you're worried about in this game for sure. Okay. We can get our green key, and again, if we had kept the one from the armory instead of opening the supply room, we could have skipped this board as well as having to solve the puzzle on the previous board. I gotta max out my score here, so I'm going after these tigers and, you know, in this dangerous spot because I have to wait for my bullet to disappear. I should not be shooting horizontally, I should be shooting vertically. Or at least in this direction, there we go. Yeah, you only get health from gems in this game, there's nothing. I definitely did the math at one point, and I'll look it up at the end, because it's in something that I have quick access to, I'm pretty sure. Assuming it's posted where I think it's posted. Also this, I, I don't know why you don't touch this thing, you have to shoot it. Right on. And you know, I was complimenting the way backtracking was handled, but then you gotta get, you have to do this. When it would have been so easy to just let the player, you know push through in the other direction, but whatever. We've destroyed the prison. Everything's wide open. There's nothing but a couple of centipedes. What is next is this horrible ruffian gauntlet here. Oh, you know what? I said I didn't like the term Sweeney's Gambit for this before because Sweeney was generally avoided it. But no, it's right here. This is a pretty much forced 50-50 split of whether you're going to get hit. Okay. I had good luck. Opening that door is very scary. Never mind. It happens there, so I will... I will concede the name Sweeney's Gambit for that kind of thing, where forests or breakable walls or something just puts you in a situation where as soon as you step on a tile, you either immediately get hit or you have one cycle to escape. And it's completely random, there's no way to tell. There's probably a way to tell. If you have something like as a reference. But let's see, we got our hint from the bandit. Yes, Ruffian was definitely a word that I learned. I also learned aligned, and I learned that it was spelled with two L's, which was not correct. But our decorative boulders aren't so decorative. And sure enough, there's some fake walls that are, in fact, fake walls. And we get the original boulder backgrounds. And this time, our invisible walls aren't nearly as annoying because they're providing valuable information here.
It's a fun way to give the information out instead of just having him tell you, by the way, the bank vault password is 40364. Like actually having to go through a cool secret and also, you know, doing this. Oh, uh, did you think one of these was a four was a one or something? Is I can definitely see that being a mistake. Another fun thing is that in addition, that's not even the only fake wall. You actually get to this side as well. And this is some weird foreshadowing for a future part of the game. And you can actually solve this puzzle from behind if you want, but we're gonna do this a bit more legit. But I do like that this connection exists in the first place. It's really strange. Lastly, worth pointing out is... Nope, no explanation. It's just, it connects for some reason. The last thing worth pointing out is that if you actually push these boulders down here, you can just block the conveyors and walk in and grab the key. So, I don't know how intentional that is, but it is a reasonable alternative solution. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna buy torches. Lord knows I don't have anything else to spend my money on. And now that we have the bank password, we can go in here. And here's some more bad game design. Push. Wrong combination. Bank fault now shot. We have soft locked the game by doing that. So don't push when it says push. There's a little more nuance to it. I don't know why it's there instead of at the end, but sure. Let's see. Four. This combination lock was like this weird sort of early ZZT mystery because people didn't know how to open the locked game that town was. You can't just look at this in the editor. Or if you don't know the cheats, there's no real way to see exactly how it works. It's pretty straightforward, really, but you'll see in a few like early worlds that I'll either rip this off or I'll just be like, this is how it works. This is how you do it. And like, it's, it's the super cool thing. Pardon? I'm, I'm seeing a DOS wait now. <laughs> oh no. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three. Now I'm like, wait, is it five or six? Yeah, it is six. Did I put in a five? Whoops. Hooray! All right, much better. Ooh, is this a soft lock too? No, no, he can just push the other boulders out. Okay, and our reward is some money. And our fourth purple key. Some, like, very needed health here. As this next segment is mostly action boards. I think another interesting thing, too, about the structure of this game is it's... It kind of does a little both action and puzzle on each path. You gotta run through the gauntlet of the three lakes and then solve the root board. You gotta fight your way through the bug maze and the think fast. Well, I guess the south is, and then there's that slider puzzle down there. The north has the whole labyrinth sequence. And then going here as well, we're gonna start off with a cave. Now, you'll note that I didn't turn in my key. Well, that's actually deliberate. Because you gotta bring a key to the cave. Let's 
Some ruffians. Some resources. I do like the sort of setup of the bears up top here because very likely you'll sort of get ambushed by them if you're moving around in this area more. And at the back of the cave here, our next mysterious board. There's a big letter Z made out of conveyors and a purple door. Which Thankfully, immediately gives you a new purple key. This way, caves of ZZT. Looking for more adventure exploring caves? Or the Caves of ZZT, another exciting game world from Atomic Computer Systems. With plenty of new creatures and more than 40 rooms to explore, you'll find your share of adventure in this one. And then interestingly, there's a link for the order form. It doesn't do anything. And the reason it doesn't is because it points to a file that's not in CZT 2.0 or any version except like one. I looked this up before starting. There's one version that actually has a file called register, but it's not register.help. So I don't think it would display even in that version. And even if it did, it is an order form, but it's incredibly not formatted for ZCT's super narrow scroll windows compared to like a full 80 column DOS window. So it's a very peculiar thing. I'm curious if there's, if, I mean, for all we know, this version of ZCT 2.0 may be incomplete. It wouldn't surprise me. We. I don't even think we know where this one came from. Right, but I'm playing in 2.0, so zzt.dat doesn't exist. It's just, there's just a bunch of help files. But there's no register.hlp. A later version has a file that's just called register with no extension. So it is kind of peculiar. So head on to the forest, and we get introduced to energizers. Can't believe I pulled that one off. Yeah, there's some interesting palette choices on this one. This also does something that I don't see often with pushers in forests. I guess you're sort of supposed to like tactically cut off your cut off enemies from following you. I don't know. It's it doesn't really add much of anything. Yeah, it's definitely sort of a dig dug thing, but I don't think yeah, it won't crush anything. Here, let's try and lure a ruffian. Come on down. Over down. Come on. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> But it won't actually crush the ruffians. I'm very, I'm like 95% confident on that. It's, it can't do anything but block the path off. Okay, we still got some lions here, so let's uh, 
They also run away from you instead of towards you, which is a fun little twist. It just straight up reverses the calculation for running towards the player so that if you're energized, it'll run away instead. Which means that it is dependent on the intelligence value. Also, I just realized I'm still holding that purple key from the caves and we've got to get rid of that or else we're going to have to do a lot of backtracking later. And with four keys, we get this cool lead up to what the heck is going to happen afterwards. I think Sweeney does this a lot in the original worlds, and I really like it. This sort of spot where you just get a glimpse of another board, either by having multiple paths through one, but it gives you this sort of something to look forward to versus if the door had just been up on the previous board. Like, we're like, what's going to happen when I open this thing? to ruin the beautiful scenery here with this forest. The more forest. This is a fun one. I've always liked this board a lot, and I am pausing it because there's duplicators. Uh, it's basically just another action -y gauntlet, but the duplicators mean you want to move fast, and they also mean that if you take damage and get sent back to the start, that the enemies are going to repopulate a good amount. It also is the first instance of sort of using torches as a sort of a background thing for trees. You see this a lot in early CZT games, before people sort of move on to using like brown text and just pressing the space bar for a brown solid. And it also has like a really cool effect for boards with darkness, but that's unrelated to town. But again, also with backtracking, you can see already that we've got these transporters so you can kind of speed up your exit and not have to get through all this again. Okay, here's a gambit. Okay. We also get the best character in the game, the tree. Invest in leaves. Oh no, I was hitting my unmute mic button to talk about how it's a good idea to sort of make these pockets and create a sort of a choke point. Now I gotta do this again. Okay, hopefully I'll be safe this time. Sort of a zigzag path just in case the lion tries to follow me. It might get a bit more of a pain to actually reach me. There are a lot of sense beads. Thankfully, they're a bit more predictable as far as how they move. And that one just decided to go the long way around. 
Into the House of Blues. So then we get to see this board as it intended. And meet everybody's favorite character, if it's not the tree. Oh yeah, so that's a, a fun issue with how ZZT handles passages and things. Since the player was last located on that tile over there and was on top of a fake wall, when the passage moved the player to bring me into the board, it took that fake wall with it. So our Jazzman puzzle is just to have a jam session. You gotta play the song back to him. And it's, it's nice in that, you know, it highlights it as you're correct and it resets when you make a mistake. So you can kind of at least make your way through it with this, which I guess is probably extra helpful if you're playing on something that didn't have a PC speaker. won his respect. We don't know what the purpose of that secret passage is. It's, it's just like more sort of foreshadowing for what's coming up later. But it's so weird because you can just actually brute force your way through the puzzle. So, I don't know. Mm. Gotta get that high score. The mixer. So people who have seen my luck with conveyors and ZZT and destroying the player, this might look a little scary. But statistically, nothing too weird should happen. Although at the same time, you can kind of see one of them. Uh, it's the one that's the lowest line there right now. It kind of seems like it's moving a lot faster. But that wouldn't track either, either actually. There's nothing... Even if it did swap its stat, there's nothing that's running that fast. So I don't know. That one just seems erratic in some way. It's just having a time out there. And we get yet again blue keys, which mean you got to get them all. And you definitely want to hug the walls here. It's a lot easier than trying to fight your way through. Lucky, this last line might cooperate. Okay, it's honestly much more important to get rid of the lions than get the keys. You definitely want to get rid of them first, because then you can kind of just mash keys until you get through. This blue key dance, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, there we go, an interview with Tim Sweeney revealing his jazz musician origins. Get these freebie centipedes. Good luck if you run out of ammo, if you take this path first. So you're gonna kind of be stuck just turning around. At least this one you can turn around on. There's no commitment. You're free to leave whenever you like. Everybody remembers Scatman John, don't worry. And this is it, key number five. All that's left is to head back to the palace and to find out what that's all about. So 
See, these transporters just kind of speed up going around the board a bit. I wonder if maybe there was like a consideration to have these things move out of the way once the puzzle was solved, because then it would be sort of a fast trip to get back to the armory and start of the game. And then perhaps he instead opted to just do this, since it's a bit more natural. I will invest in leaves, don't worry. Unless I get hit on the way there. Okay. These have been invested in, and now we can get rid of this last key. So yeah, still a good bit of backtracking on this path, but it's not as bad as it could be. You pretty much have to just hold left. We got plenty of torches, plenty of ammo. We're actually doing pretty good on health, I would say, to have 70 at this point. And now to get our, our eternal reward. All right, some flashy sound and effects. There's this odd thing here. One last free resupply. So like, again, the ammo in this game is plentiful. Now this one is actually a fairly ZZT itself. Here we are, what could this be? What is this gonna do? You have found an ampersand and you just get some bonus points. And that one's a contender for a favorite object just because, I mean, the, there's already the great joke of it actually being an ampersand, but if you actually look at the code, the object is named necklace. So, It's like he realized, wait, no, it's much better if this actually is an ampersand. I think Dungeons has a similar joke. We'll definitely get to that. And now we finally get to see where this root board connection goes. And this unfortunately makes town really weird to map out, but I do love these weird connections. I'm sure I learned, well, no, I didn't learn ampersand, uh, ampersand from this object because there's no way I made it this far as a child. It's not over yet. Even more ammo. Like, that don't look good. And you have to ride the pushers in. Hope you don't get hurt too much. Oh no, I did. Uh, I was on a one credit run. I was almost gonna do it. It always comes down to this board. This is like the moment of truth. You wanna do this way. Wow, actually, I'm having some rotten luck. Basically, you want to get yourself in a corner and shoot wildly. I 
Oh yeah, that's right. You can do that, actually. The smart way to do it is to send some of the pushers through first. And that'll kind of clear a path. It'll potentially crush some. And at least spread them out a bit, since it kind of has to, like, split the middle. Well, almost got it in one. We get our sixth purple key, the one they don't tell you about. Although, I mean, I guess we had another one in the cave, and multiples in the scepter room. There's several purple keys. And here we go. The, the grand finale. More character one smiley faces. And beat two, keep beat, keep on going. Did it say four for the opening? That is definitely five in the later versions. Congratulations, you have successfully completed the ZZT. I am a brave warrior. There we are. Okay, wow, I I beat him. I snuck in at the end there. By just a few hundred points. So that was Town. The very first CZT game. It's, it's still legit fun to play 30 years later. The flaws that it has are pretty minor. It's like some invisible walls and like a single horrible tiger segment at the very end that makes you regret every hit that you take for the rest of the game. I'm just going to confirm, people are saying that the opening scroll said four keys in this version? It does, wow! That's actually really, really interesting. Because obviously that must have changed at some point in development. I wonder what the, if the bank was the fifth key? I mean, that's the one I would imagine adding at the last seconds. Let me see here. No, no, I mean, it is... We're going to cheat our way into the editor. Does it really not let you in ZZT 2.0? Okay, wow, okay, 2.0 just straight up will not let you load locked files, even with debug mode. Okay, now we are in the correct directory here. So yeah, real quick. I was muted, I sure was. Real quick though, yes, it does say four purple keys. So originally... Because you're supposed to get one from the castle. One from the root board. Yes, that funky drum thing was the, hey, I couldn't open this world sound. Root board. I mean, you can see from like the structure, if you go like in order through the boards, that it's kind of like, Arranged, interestingly. One from the mixer. One from this. And one from the bank. 
Yeah, the, the bank is kind of at the very end here. I mean, there's like definitely spare purple keys, as you can see from here, in that sense. But it's normally, yeah, one for each compass direction plus the bank. Mm -hmm. Our last. So the bank is the last edition that has one. I mean, that's definitely a possibility that there wasn't a bank there originally. I don't know what it could have been. And maybe it was the prison. And because we know that the bug maze got rearranged a bit because the castle connects to it still. It's very strange. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, Tim's spelling ain't the greatest, but... It's all good. It was 1991. Who had a spell check? If that's going to be it for town, uh, the town of ZZT. ZZT, the object oriented game. Uh, one other thing, as long as we have the editor popped open here, that's a snake. That's a mystery. There's a, you know, a few fun typos. I mean, here it's like even the board title Labyrinth. Labyrinth is apparently a notoriously difficult word to spell amongst the ZZT and Megazoo community. So that's going to be it for today. I'll let you all, myself included, get back to watching GDQ. But this game is still a ton of fun to play. If you haven't played this one or any of the other original worlds, I honestly do recommend them. They're good. 30 years on, they're fun games. They certainly are no longer the most technical accomplishments but they absolutely do a great job of just making something fun oh yes uh next in the order according to super zzt is caves which is considered the bonus game if you register the shareware you get a copy of caves and optionally you can buy dungeons and city so that's going to be all for now thank you all for watching we'll be back next sunday See ya.